In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to how we are going to write something like this as partial fractions. Okay, so the first thing to do, uh, rather than kind of like just go and write this is how we do it, is to explore um, what you might try first. And you might try, okay, well, I could write this as a over x plus 1 plus b over x squared plus 1. Maybe that will work, okay? Maybe it will. So let's see. We're going to multiply both sides by the x plus 1, x squared plus 1. And I will be left with 5x take away 7 on the left-hand side. And we'll have a times x squared plus 1 plus b lots of x plus 1. Okay? Now, if this was the case, um, then... Now, I, if you're used to watching my partial fractions videos, I don't use comparing coefficients as a method, as my go-to method. Um, however, in this case, it is particularly useful. Um, now, the whole idea between uh, about sorry um, comparing coefficients is saying, right, well, if the left-hand side's got to be 5x take away 7, and it's got to be the same as the right-hand side... The first thing to identify is that the right-hand side can't have a quadratic term, okay? It can't have a quadratic term on the right-hand side because there's no quadratic term on the left-hand side. So, I know that I'm going to multiply a by x squared. Now, if that's the case, then in order to not get a quadratic term, a is going to have to be 0, okay? So, that's telling me that a has to be 0 in order to not get that quadratic term. So if a is 0, I then have 5x take away 7 has got to be the same as b lots of x plus 1. But x plus 1 isn't a factor of 5x minus 7. There is no value of b that will make that work. It would also mean, effectively, that this fraction would, could simplify to something over x squared plus 1. It's the same deal. So clearly, we are running into a brick wall that is not working. This whole setup here can't be right. Now, the reason why it's not right is because we must um, effectively, we must deal with any possible eventuality. Okay, we saw it didn't work in that case, but we must deal with every eventuality. Um, and so, in order to make it work, we're going to have to have a term in the numerator that is one less in order, in power, than the denominator. Okay? So, what we need is a linear term, not a constant term, a linear term for the x squared plus 1. So, if I'd had a cubic term in the denominator, I would need a quadratic term in the numerator. So, here I could write bx plus c, because that is a linear term. It deals with the possibility that b could be 0, right? But we could all equally have b not being 0, and that would still work. Okay? So, we've seen it doesn't work when b is 0, because we just showed that it doesn't work. So, b has to be non-zero in order for this to work. So, as I said, if this was x cubed, I would have bx squared plus cx plus d in the numerator. I'd need a, a, an expression that would be a quadratic to go above the cubic. OK, so oh, let's just make sure we change that as well. So, let's run with this and see how this works. So, I'm going to multiply up, as I usually would. 5x take away 7 is equivalent to a lots of x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c times x plus 1. So, again, you could go about comparing coefficients. That's perfectly up to you. I prefer substituting values in. So, first thing I would substitute in is x equals minus 1. So, let x be minus 1. Now, the left-hand side is going to be minus 5 take away 7, so minus 12. 
I'm going to get minus 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1 is 2, so I get 2a. So that means that a is going to have to be minus 6, because x equals minus 1 knocks out that term there. So we've got a. Right, next up, um, if we let uh, x be 0, let's see what happens then. So we're going to get minus 7 on the left-hand side. We've got 0 plus 1 times a, so 1 lot of a is minus 6. And then we've got x being 0, and x being 0, so we get c times 1, so plus c. So that means that c has got to be minus 1. Right, there's no other obvious choices to knock out terms, so let's choose uh, x equals 1 next. So we get 5 take away 7, which is minus 2 on the left-hand side. We've got 1 plus 1, so 2 lots of a, so minus 12, plus b times 1 take away 1. So we'll have b take away 1 times by 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we have minus 2, or well, I could add 12 to both sides, couldn't I? So that gets us 10 is equal to 2b take away 2. So add the 2 to both sides, we get 12. So b has got to be equal to 6. So we now have the a, the b, and the c. So 5x take away 7 over x plus 1, x squared plus 1 will be equivalent to a over x plus 1, so minus 6 over x plus 1, plus bx, so 6x, take away 1, over x squared plus 1. OK? Now, if you need convincing that that has worked, um, I could do some cross-multiplication here. So... Um, 6 minus 6, let's put the minus sign into the numerator, minus 6 times x squared plus 1 is minus 6x squared minus 6. And I've got x plus 1 times 6x minus 1, so plus 6x squared, take away x plus 6x, take away 1, all over x plus 1, x squared plus 1. So the 6x squareds cancel. Uh, I've got 6x, uh, take away x is 5x, and I've got minus 6, take away 1, which is minus 7, over x plus 1, x squared plus 1. And so it's worked. And so this is how you deal with this quadratic term in the, in the denominator that won't factorise, or is awkward to factorise. You can utilise this in order to make your life easier to split it up into partial fractions.